Hello everyone, the announcement that we have been waiting since the start of 2022 has finally been made. Canada has announced its multi-year immigration levels plan for 2022, 23 and 24. And yes, the big news is that they would be now taking 1.3 million or rather more than 1.3 million immigrants in these three years. So in today's announcements, they have significantly increased the number of immigrants that they would be taking in for 2022 and 2023. Okay, before you get too happy with this headline, I want you to watch this video till the end because this news or this headline might fool you. Many consultants uh, may actually tell you about this news and they might try to mint money only to fool you because the reality is something different. If you dig deep into what they've announced, you will find out something which is heartbreaking, which might be a big blow to many people who have been dreaming about Canadian dream since a long time. So what is it all about? Let's find out. Okay, so this is the 2022-24 immigration level plans that has been released today. Clearly you can see that the overall planned permanent resident admissions has gone up. For all three years, 2022, 23 and 24, the number is over 1.3 million. So that's a very big number. And in the whole schema of things, it looks like Canada is looking to get even more immigrants this year and the next. But when you start to compare this particular plan with the plan that was released last year, then you see some striking differences and unfortunately some heartbreaking ones as well. So this is the one that was released last year for 2021 to 23. Of course, we won't talk about 2021. So let's compare the new plan, which is the 2022 to 23 with the old plan. So earlier, the target for 2022 was 411,000 while for 2023 was 421,000 while this year it has been increased to 431, 645 and 447, 055. Sounds very good. But the trouble actually starts when you dig deep into it and you look into this first row. The federal high skilled for 2022 it says around 55,900 and in 2023 it says 75,750 while when you look at the old plan we can clearly see that the number was 110,500 and 113,750 so in the new plan they've actually reduced this number to 50% of what it was originally planned for these two years now this is the memo that came into public attention last month and in this first paragraph, they've summed it up exactly the same thing. FHS is likely to face a significant reduction to accommodate other ministerial and departmental priorities. Under the current options, the FHS admission targets could be significantly reduced with some preliminary scenarios seeing decreases by more than 50% of the 110.5 thousand that was allocated in the previous plan. The reason? TR to PR stream and the resettlement of Afghan nationals. Now this is what is actually depressing. Yes, we were expecting something in these lines. Nobody was willing to actually believe what was mentioned in that memo. But almost all the details that are mentioned in that memo have proven to be true now. Unfortunately, not just 2022, even 23 targets are affected by that. But when we see that this number has been reduced by 50%, then how come this number has grown even more? It's because of this number mentioned here. First of all, the Federal Economic Public Policies. What is this? So if we try to check this out, it's actually the TR to PR pathways. And they're expecting that all the applications, all the admissions would be completed by the end of 2023. So very high processing times. For all the files that would be processed this year and 32,000 that would be processed next year. And then in 2024, they haven't mentioned anything of this sorts because they expect this to be completed by the end of 2023. But if you look about the next couple of streams, the Federal Business, Economic Pilots and Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, the numbers that they've mentioned here are remaining more or less the same. A slight change there, but still more or less the same. Federal Business 1000 
around 10,000 for economic pilots and uh, for immigration pilot program around 6,250. But they've increased the quota once again for the PNP nominations 83,500. Earlier they had planned this to 81,500 and 83,000 next year. So the total for 2022 which was earlier 241,500 has now been increased. So the reduction of number of applications that we see here has been compensated by the TR to PRs and some of the increments that we see here and the number remains more or less the same 241,850 which is just slightly above what they planned last year and for 2023 it is 253,000 which is again few thousands more than what they planned last year. Okay, now for the family category, here for the spouse, parents and children, the number is staying the same as planned last year to 80,000. But for parents and grandparents, they've increased it a bit to 25,000. So the total number is 105,000. Of course, as mentioned in that memo, the main reason for decreasing this quota is the TR to PR and the Afghan resettlement plan, which was not there in the last year's plan. So if you see the total number of refugees in the new plan, it's mentioned as 76,545 while in the old plan, it was only 59,500. So there's the significant increase in the number of refugees that they will be taking for this year and the next as well. All right, now many of you would be thinking about the consequences of this reduction in the quota. So. Many of you would actually ask me the same question again. When can we expect the all program draws or the CEC draws? Uh, to be very frank with you, as we have seen in the past and in this announcement as well, most of the points that were mentioned in that memo that came into public eye last month, if not all, most of the points have been correct. As it was mentioned in that memo that in the first half of 2022, there should not be any draw. So that might be the case that in the first half of 2022, we might not see any draw. Going further, after that, we might see some draws. Uh, but I feel personally that those draws might be CEC specific draws. They would give preference to those people who would be in Canada um, instead of uh, those people who are outside of Canada. I know this might again be heartbreaking for many people. Anyways, uh, we don't know what it would be. So I don't want to comment on it right now. But whenever they actually conduct these draws, uh, it is for sure that the cutoff scores would be very, very high initially uh, above 500. It was again mentioned that memo. So I would be talking about uh, increasing your score or maybe how you can actually uh, create a new strategy to get your Canadian PR according to the changed circumstances. If you want me to create that video, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll definitely try to do that. Okay guys, my job is to bring the right information to you, to do the right analysis and present that in front of you. Whether it's good or bad, whether it's exciting or disappointing, I'll continue doing that. I just wanted to bring the right information in front of you instead of portraying the rosy picture. I do not believe in that. Whatever is the uh, right picture, you should know exactly about that because I know so many of you have been planning your life based on these uh, critical decisions about the Canadian immigration. Of course, you've been waiting for so long, uh, since 2020 actually, to get an invitation. You're waiting every single week to uh, check for the draws. If they have conducted the all program draws, salute to you guys who have been uh, so patient. If I was in your place, I probably have, would have given up. So what could be the new strategy to get PR in 2022? We'll discuss very soon in an upcoming video. If you want to see that video, please do not forget to click the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching this video.